Herod was the one who had John the Baptist arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but wasn't able to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. She had an opportunity one day when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. Herodias' own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, Ask of you whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request. I want you to give me at once on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests, he did not wish to break his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl, in turn, gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the was basically the last of the prophets right, before the coming of the greatest prophet, right, the prophet after whom no other prophets are needed. We also know this is significant because it initiated a turning point in the ministry of Jesus. Right? It was once Jesus found out that John had been arrested right, that Jesus' preaching began to change and he started speaking about his coming martyrdom. It's a very significant thing that took place. It's also significant in light of all of salvation history. Right? One of the things that, one of the, one of the books that I read when I was finishing up seminary that completely you know, changed my thinking about the Bible was a doctoral dissertation by a scholar named Dr. Grant Petrie. Right? And one of the things that he argued in that book, which was so interesting, is that many of us, we've all been taught if we've done like a, you know, a beginner Bible study or anything like that, we're all told that when Jesus came, everybody was surprised because they were expecting a military Messiah who was basically going to you know, lead a revolution against the Roman Empire. And the nation of Israel would become autonomous. This is something that some people believed, and that's why there were people all throughout, the, you know, shortly after the years of Jesus, that were trying to lead rebellions. And even in our modern age today, there are still some people right, who think that this is you know, the fulfillment of those Old Testament prophecies, that Israel needs to be its autonomous nation, and then it's near the time of the end. But what this book taught me is that when you read the Bible closely, especially many parts of the Old Testament, it's very clear that there not only was an expectation that the Savior of the world would be a king-like person, but it was also very clear that part of the coming of his kingdom, a major aspect of it, would be persecution and suffering. This is what some scholars call the Great Tribulation. That many prophets of the Old Testament, they prophesied that when the Messiah would come, it would not usher in an era of great glory and triumph, but rather of great suffering and distress persecution. And so when John the Baptist was arrested and then beheaded, Jesus saw this as the initiation of the tribulation, of which his own martyrdom would be another key piece of this. And not only his own martyrdom, but then the martyrdom of his 
disciples. What this means is that when we hear about the martyrdom of John the Baptist and of Jesus and about the other apostles, this was not something that was foreign to what was expected. It's not a surprise. All throughout the Bible, this is one of the clear messages. With the coming of the kingdom, there would be persecution. In fact, even in the Old Testament, that was very common. Prophets were often persecuted and even put to death, and thrown into prison. It's significant for us that we all remember this, that to be a member of God's people, to be a member of the kingdom, inevitably, there will always be suffering and persecution. That we as members of God's people, we are basically infiltrating behind enemy lines. Jesus himself said that the prince of this world is the devil. And therefore we shouldn't be surprised when we receive you know, obstacles or resistance. Or even when we become innocent victims of the sins of others. We are in the midst of a broken world. Suffering and persecution is always a part of a Christian's life in one way or another. And it's also important for us to remember each day, especially when we have the holy sacrifice of the Mass, to be in particular remembering the people throughout the world. That all of us, we might experience you know, certain you know, minor persecutions, right? maybe our reputation gets damaged or something because of our faith. But there are literally hundreds and thousands of people every day throughout the world who are literally shedding their blood for this faith that we hold dear. And so especially when we come to the Mass, we should be remembering all of those people throughout the world and be praying for them and asking that the fruits of their suffering might also bear fruit with the conversion of many sinners throughout the world.